This is a brief presentation of the Timberline Estimating Program. I've loaded the program and I've also loaded the database, which in this case is the concrete. Uh, I'm going to come in here and create a sample estimate to kind of show you how the program works. I just say new estimate here and I'll just call this a concrete estimate. I'll click OK here. The system will go out and build the file that I'll be using in order to build my estimate with. Uh, this is my cover page. I'm going to come back to this in a minute, but for now I'm just going to hit close. It opens up to my blank spreadsheet where I'm going to be taking items out of the database and bringing into the estimate. If you take a look up here at the toolbar, uh, you'll notice these buttons have turned on. I'm going to click on this first one right here, which is my quick takeoff button, and it opens up my database. The Timberline database is organized into a hierarchy. It is group, phase, and item. We're looking at the groups right now. Say for example I want to see the phases of footing and beams. I click on the folder, it opens up and shows me the different phases. If I want to see the items in any given phase, I just open up the phase. So it's group, phase, and item. All the items that I say I'm going to need in order to do a continuous footing. If, say, for example, I'm doing a grade beam, here are all my items for the grade beam. I'm going to close this group and go to footings and slabs. So, say, for example, slab on grade. These are all the things that I say that I need in order to do a slab on grade. So, if I say I'm doing a slab, I say, well, I need layout, and I need some base material, and I need some vapor screed, and I need some water stop, and so forth, right down the list. Pretty straightforward. If we take a look, it's taken our items and laid them across the screen, and now they're ready for the quantities. So if I come in here and say it's uh, 1,500 square feet or 2,100 square feet for that matter, and it, there are a variety of ways of putting that quantity into the spreadsheet. For example, if you're using a program such as on-screen takeoff or PlanSwift, you can insert that from the graphic drawing. Uh, if you're using a calculation method, we can come in here and enter it that way. Um, Essentially, once you enter in the quantity, the system goes out and calculates your cost for you based on the different categories that you say are required. In this instance, I have a labor cost, a labor square foot cost, an order quantity based on my productivity factor, a labor amount, my material price, my material amount, and so forth as we work our way across the screen. So essentially, I have two totals in my estimate, my total amount, and then my grand total. So essentially, this is my cost, here's how much I'm marking it up, and here's how much I'm selling it for. I can turn on a variety of different columns in the spreadsheet. Uh, this is just a few that I have turned on now. Uh, so what I can do is I can go through and build different looks of my spreadsheet. And I can save those to what we call a spreadsheet layout group. When I click here, these are all the different layouts. You'll see right now I'm using this one. But if I wanted to, I could switch to a totals view or a grand totals view or anything else that I've made up. Back at the spreadsheet, you'll notice that I've entered in the quantity here, and these two, three are still waiting for quantities. Notice how they're highlighted in blue, uh, excuse me, in red, and in bold. Once I enter in a quantity, it becomes part of the estimate. This is what we call error catching. Uh, imagine if you would several pages of an estimate. Uh, if you're missing a quantity or dollar value, this would stand out pretty significant. So you're able to find the items that require some more attention. If, for example, I decide I don't want this quantity, I can just go over to the left-hand margin, right mouse click, and remove it from the estimate. Now let's say there's uh, 2,100 square feet of vapor barrier grade. Pretty straightforward. That's called our quick takeoff. Another way of taking off uh, items and bringing them into the estimate is using what we call our quick, excuse me, what we call our assembly takeoff. I'm going to close this window here and going to go to assembly takeoff. This opens up my groups again, but in this instance, what I've done is I've taken, for example, continuous footings, and when I click here, all the items that I think that I need in order to do a continuous footing are stored here at the bottom. Now what happens is I come over here and I start entering the dimensions of my footing. Um, once again, uh, there's a, vari a variety of ways of putting this in. If I was using uh, something like PlanSwift, I could be actually entering the quantities right into this window. And it would be something like, uh, we'll say, 50 feet long. Uh, maybe it's uh, 3 feet wide and it's 2 feet deep. 
and uh, maybe there's some over excavation maybe there's uh, 20 feet of this and 20 feet of that and so forth right down the list another thing another th way of looking at these assemblies is this, this is like a checklist to make sure you don't miss anything as you're doing this takeoff here here again uh, these questions are entirely user definable and what happens is when you're entering in these questions answering these variables it's looking down at these items and where applicable applying the calculation method to come up with the quantities required for each one of these line items so essentially I'm going to work my way through this this variable list and uh, so forth and um, once I go through the list and answer all the questions the system will go out and calculate these quantities I stopped here for example to show you um, this notice if I go between 2000 and 6000 it will select it for me let's say I'm not paying attention and I type in 7000 for example the system stops and says wait you've exceeded the range and I say oh okay it goes back to the default 2,000. I'll say in this case it's 3,000. And you'll also notice in the next one, uh, it pre-filled with normal concrete. This is something we can control at the user level, which as variables you would want to have a default value on, and uh, ranges and so forth. Is slur required? Uh, yes. If so, more information. If no, then zero. Number of VIM beds, and so forth, right through the list. I, uh, if I wanted to, I could take off some rebar and say by the piece, yes. And then it would ask me all the different questions. Here again, if yes, then more information. If no, then zero. Maybe I want to take my rebar off this way, just pounds per square foot. Uh, essentially, you can use a variety of methods to calculate your quantities. This is just one uh, assembly that's built into this database. So I'm going to hit enter. And when I hit the last line of my variable list, it goes out and calculates all the quantities based upon these dimensions. You'll also notice if you look over to the left here, it's created what we call an audit trail and that's important because what it's done is recorded all of these quantities that were entered in to generate these quantities down here or I should say these dimensions or these counts or these areas whatever they might be have been recorded into this pass. That's important because watch I'm going to say OK here. I'm going to close this and go back to my spreadsheet. You'll notice that my spreadsheet is sorting a group phase and item. The reason it's doing that as you look down at the bottom of the screen, that's how we're telling it to sort right here. Let's say, for example, I want to see it the way I just took it off, which was in the assembly. So when I click on this tab right here, it takes me to the assembly. Now there's my takeoff, there's my quantity, and here's all the quantities that were generated for that footing. Notice this is unassigned here, because these are the ones I brought in using quick takeoff. Let's say, for example, I realize that there's a change and I say, oh, it's not 50 feet, it's uh, 85 feet or something like that. I say I want to go in and review the assembly. And you'll notice right now my assembly variables are blank. If I come over here and click on the pass and the audit, it loads all of those dimensions that I entered in previously. I can come in here and say, no, it's really 47 feet long and the footing width is 2.5 feet. But everything else about it is okay. So I can just come over here and say replace it all out. So it goes out very quickly, rolls out the incorrect quantities, recalculates based on these new quantities, and updates my assembly that quick. So not only can I go in and do a quick and accurate takeoff, but I can very conveniently go back, modify, and edit any of the ta uh, tasks that I've done in the past. So I'm going to say OK here close and it takes me back to my spreadsheet and it's updated all the quantities based on those new dimensions. So we're going to take a quick look at the totals page and if I come over here it shows me my estimate recapped by the five major categories, the total labor hours required based upon my scope of work, what those percentages are and notice this right here I'll come back to this in a minute and then what my total cost is right here this is what we call our add-on it's a small tool and you'll notice in that little window it's based on labor and it's based at two percent I say well no on this job it's going to be three and a half and when I hit enter it goes out and it updates the math that's the beauty of this program it is always going to be mathematically correct no what if I say I need hundred and twenty dollars in small tools and notice three point five that updates itself so what I'm trying to show you is that no matter where you're at in the spreadsheet or in the totals page, the system will always be mathematically correct. This is another add-on here. It's based on all my five categories and at 
here again I can come in here and set these what we call add-ons up any way we want, make them look at any total we want or any quantity we want and calculate accordingly. This is nothing more than a sample of how you could set up your totals page. I'm going to click OK here and as I said notice this cost per unit. I can come back over here and let's say I just want to put in the job size. Let's say the total job is something like 3500 square feet. When I say OK here it goes out and it calculates my unit cost based upon the quantity I just entered. Very powerful. You notice what it's also done. It's allowed me to get a unit cost for my total job. Maybe I look there and say, no, this project should really cost about 275 a square foot. It says, okay, in order to do that, you need to increase your estimate by $1,900, and that would bring you 275 a square foot, which would bring you to your new total. I say, okay, I like that. I'm going to go through here, and I'm going to spread my variance. Actually, I'm going to close this first. And now it's gone through and it's grabbed the total and it's ready to spread it back across the estimate. Now in this instance, I'm just going to apply it to the total. But if I wanted to, I could come over here and say, no, apply some of it here and apply some of it here and apply some of it here and so forth. So just for this presentation, I'm just going to do it on the total. But as you can see, I can assign it anywhere I want. I say I want to adjust the column and I want to spread that amount of the $1,900. I say OK. It goes out and you notice it does the math and tells me what my new total is and what my original was. And uh, let's say, for example, I said, well, that's pretty cool. I'm going to go back, take a look, and I said, well, you know, I was just seeing what would happen. I didn't necessarily want to do it. So I'm going to quickly close here. I can right mouse click, adjust the column, and I say I want to undo the adjustment, okay, and it rolls things back to the way they were before I started changing the prices. Uh, very powerful program, entirely user definable. Uh, the backbone to it is really the database. It allows me to go in there and set up all of these intelligent items and use them in my estimates. Thank you.